If you start in the continental United States and you head east, and let's say you get to the east coast, but then you keep going east, uh, you will land first in the Atlantic Ocean. If you then keep going a little further over and up, you will get eventually to the North Sea. And then if you keep going just a little further over and up, you will get to the Baltic Sea. And then if you keep going just a little further over from there, east of the Baltic Sea, you will get to the Baltic States, three of them, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. And those three countries are small. Uh, their equivalent uh, population as countries is about the same as Maine, New Mexico, and Kansas. And Baltic states, lovely places, interesting part of the world, really small population. But after 9-11 happened, those really small countries in that far-flung part of the world, they decided to step up in a big way for us. When 9-11 happened, those countries had not even been made part of NATO yet. They all got admitted to the NATO alliance in 2004. But after 9-11, they stepped up. The big deal about NATO, the heart of it, is called Article 5. Article 5 says if any country that's a member of NATO gets attacked, the other countries in NATO will come help. That's the alliance. You attack one of us, you attack all of us. That's the treaty. That's Article 5. And the first and only time Article 5 has ever been invoked was after we were attacked on 9-11. And those small Baltic countries who were on their way to joining NATO, who weren't even in NATO when the attacks happened, they stepped up and they punched way above their weight. Take, for example, the teeny, 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 tiny Baltic state of Estonia. Population 1.3 million in the whole country. That whole country has, a, has less population than San Diego. But, but even so, they deployed a combat force of about 150 soldiers into some of the most dangerous combat zones in Afghanistan to go fight the Taliban. They lost a total of nine soldiers, which might not seem huge numbers-wise, but per capita, proportionally based on the size of their population and ours, per capita, they lost about the same amount of soldiers as the United States did in Afghanistan. Uh, they not only sacrificed a lot, the Baltic countries were really valuable in the fight. Uh, take this one tactical decision. In 2007, Lithuanian special forces were deployed to Afghanistan. They were frustrated that uh, their soldiers in armored vehicles kept getting ambushed by Taliban fighters on motorcycles. And the Taliban guys on the motorcycles could outrun them. They were faster and nimbler. They couldn't catch them when they tried to go after them after these attacks. So Lithuanian special forces made a decision. They traded in their armored trucks for their own Motorcycles, they put their special operators on dirt bikes. It became the signature thing about the Lithuanian commandos. They rode souped up Yamaha motocross bikes. They set up a training area. They taught themselves to ride like basically armed motocross bandits, how to maneuver these light, nimble, totally unprotected bikes in rough terrain, off road while chasing down the enemy. And the lightness of those bikes ended up being a key adaptation for that particular fight. In that part of Afghanistan, the Taliban would regularly set pretty stiff springs on the, the pressure plates that they used as triggers for their hidden IED. So they're planting bombs in the road. They've got pressure plates that set them off, but they'd set the pressure plates to be, to, to be pretty stiff. And the idea was that random civilian traffic and foot traffic wouldn't set it off. But you setting across one of those trigger plates a, a big, heavy, armored vehicle, like all the foreign troops used, well, yeah, that would be heavy enough to set it off. Here come the Lithuanian Special Forces riding these light motorcycles like the Taliban did. It was one of the ways they beat that critical tactic. Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, these three tiny countries, when Article 5 was triggered after 9-11, they stood up. They sent troops to go fight and die alongside the United States in Iraq, in Afghanistan, as a response to the 9-11 attacks. No questions asked. We're in a treaty together. That's what NATO means. We're there. That is part of why it is a big deal that during this presidential campaign this year, Donald Trump said if Russia invaded those three little countries, those Baltic states, those three countries we're in a treaty with, who came to our defense and aid after we were attacked, that's why it's a big deal that he said, yeah, if they got attacked by Russia, we might not come to their defense. If they, never, if they ever needed us, eh, not sure. And granted, that is just one of a million things that Donald Trump that has said that is controversial, right, since he has been running for president. But it is also the sort of thing that has 
consequences, international consequences that may not be dependent, dependent on whether or not Donald Trump gets elected. It's the kind of comment that can do harm right now to our alliances, to our relationships, to the trust between us and our allies, especially small countries like these that gave up so much when we asked. And that is why Vice President Biden went where he did today. Vice President Biden today went to the Baltics. He went to Latvia and he met there with the leaders of Latvia and Estonia and Lithuania. And he basically went there and talked to them to try to clean up this mess that Donald Trump made, to try to reassure those countries that regardless of what you might have heard, we are not going to abandon them. Despite what you hear in this heated political season, there is a wide, deep, bipartisan commi a commitment to NATO in my country. Don't listen to that other fellow. He knows not of what he speaks. And he doesn't know of what he speaks. We will never forget that Article 5 was triggered for the first time after the United States was attacked on 9-11. So America will never fail to defend our allies. We will respond. And with, Ru with Russia once more taking aggressive actions, and threatening the sovereign rights of its neighbors, NATO remains as vital today as it ever has been. Don't listen to the other fellow, which gets kind of a gasp and a laugh from the room. Just ignore that guy. He has no idea what he's talking about. Vice President Biden having to go all the way to Latvia today, to the Baltic states, to go tell them to go reassure them that this other fellow running for president has no idea what he is talking about and what he threatens and what he says will never come to fruition. Clean up on aisle five.